Okay. Okay. Right, so welcome to tonight's planning meeting, everybody. Good evening, Chairman. Um, Hello. We have two members of the public wishing to speak. You've got 15 minutes to share between you. Um, I'll let the town clerk let you know when your time is up, if you're still talking. And um, so we can share the time equally. Okay, so who would like to start? Um, me, my name's June Richardson. Welcome, Jen. Thank you. Can I start? Yes, please. Well, my name is June and I live in Bourton Mill House, which is a Grade 2 listed building with my partner. My mum and dad and son and partner live in two other properties. Um, we are totally, we're all totally opposed to this planning application. The outdoor exercise zone actually opened this morning despite the planning being in the stage it's in and it was loud, intrusive and a total invasion of our privacy. It was heard in all our ho ha homes and could even be heard at the end of the garden. It wasn't as loud as the practice sessions that we've been enduring lately as they are probably aware that over the weekend many objections have come from other neighbours but it will ultimately be much louder I'm sure. There have been many objections posted this weekend, and I think there will be a lot more, but people are unaware of this as no signs have been erected. All the objections raise the same fears about noise, light pollution, impact on the environment, and disturbance to people's enjoyment of life. They cover all ages from young families to retired couples. The drawing on the, the area on the drawing outlined by them in blue on their plans is incorrect, and it is in fact larger than shown, as they have completely covered the mill race and this is where the 10 spin bikes are stationed. The historical mill race bri bridge has almost disappeared due to the raised floor. Their ecology and trees checklist hasn't mentioned bats, nesting birds, dormice, water, water voles. Is this even a proper one? This area was badly flooded on the 23rd and 24th of December this year. Um, regarding their comments on lighting, unless the area is fully enclosed and the light the light will and does pollute other areas. They had them on the lights on the other night and they were horrendous. There are two CCTV cameras, not one. The plans state that it is not part of any conservation area, but Bolton Mill House is listed under planning, in brackets, listed buildings and conservation areas. Act 1990 has amended for its special architectural or historic interest. Also, they state that the area was previously used as storage it was in fact a green area with various shrubs, plants and weeds, which gave us privacy. This would be a disaster for the environment. Our garden is totally natural and home to a huge array of wildlife, including bats, kingfishers, herons, swallows, dragonflies, snakes, etc. And loud noise and bright lights will impact on all life here. The herons, kingfishers and swallows all fish in our pond and river right next to this exercise area. The swallows and kingfishers have been seen diving under the mill race bridge but not, I'm not sure whether they will now due to the decking and the arch almost gone. The bats have shared this area with us for years and will be so vulnerable to the noise as they use sound waves and echoes to get around. They are nocturnal and have adapted to a life in darkness and artificial lighting of bat roofs, access points and foraging pathways will be extremely disturbing. The exercise area is very close to their oil tank, which holds over 2000 meters of oil, which we know the exact quantity as it spilled, spilled onto our land in October 2015, causing absolute destruction to our gardens and river. How safe is this for people to exercise close by? The loss of privacy is devastating. We are now completely overlooked in a previously very private area of our garden. The whole outdoor area is literally in our garden, causing our dogs to bark constantly. Last week, we could see an instructor peering in the lounge of the annex from his spin bike. There is not a single part of this new studio that doesn't overlook us. Also, since this area has been developed, and it's completely finished, by the way, it's not part retrospective, the door used for access is open most of the day and is very intrusive to the annex. Not only do people stand on the top of the stairs, but the gym users inside look out over our garden and home whilst exercising. We can also hear the music coming from inside the gym due to the door being open. I haven't been able to find one single case of an outdoor exercise studio being built next to residential properties. There are many rules and regulations regarding building of gyms and noise is featured heavily, but from the aspect of breaking out from the facade of the building, from music, patrons, fitness classes, including spin, these noises are happening outside already. 
They have approved planning in 2018 for an indoor studio to the front of the building. My parents are 89 and 86 and both in very bad health. They only leave their home and garden for medical reasons and it is heartbreaking to see them lose what little privacy and enjoyment they have. According to the Human Rights Act, a person has the right to peaceful enjoyment of all their of all their possessions, which includes the home and other land. Noise, stress, lack of privacy, and a real threat to the environment and wildlife. This is why we object to the outside facilities already established by Kabir Sugu on behalf of on behalf of Midas Technical Solutions and Baltimore Health Club. Thank you. Thank you for that, Jen. Do appreciate that. Okay, would our next speaker like to start? Hi, um, my name's Liv Richards and I live on Kingfisher Road, which is uh, the, the close opposite the Borton Mill. So mm -hmm. on the other side of Borton Road. Um, I only actually found out about this at the weekend. Um, it was actually June that um, gave me the information. And to be honest, I was absolutely horrified. I've been over to have a look at it at the weekend and I can see why June is so passionately yeah. upset about it um, because it's absolutely awful what's happening. Um, I felt so passionate about it um, and I went along and I spoke to all the neighbours along Kingfisher Road and Lark Close at the other end of Kingfisher Road. Um, and you will see um, since my objection and June and her mother's objection, there have been a further 11 objections. Mm that since me having a word with a few people on Saturday, um, I don't think there were actually many more houses than the 11 objections that you've had. There may have been a couple that haven't objected yet, um, but people are very, very upset. They're very angry that there's been no information from the club. Mm -hmm. um, there's been no planning notices posted. Um, and they've gone ahead and they've built it. And June is is correct. I've been and I've had a look and it's completely ready, ready to go. And these classes actually started today. I checked the website yesterday and they were advertised as starting to go ahead today. And they have indeed gone ahead today. I can hear it from my house. Um, I couldn't hear the music. I'm not sure if there was music playing, but I could hear a tannoy system. I could hear voices and I'm actually quite far away. I'm I'm quite a bit further away than a lot of the other houses that that are you know much closer to the area um I echo absolutely everything that June has said um and it's too close to a residential area mm -hmm. they've gone ahead and done all this without the planning they've got no care for their neighbors um and I you know I hope that you go and have a look at all the objections and mm -hmm. that you do you do throw it out and you I know that councils can you know they can if they go and do work before they're allowed to, you can make them take it away again. And I hope that's what happens because they're arrogant and it's made me really angry. All right, thank you. Thank you. I would yeah. just say that anyone's welcome to have a come and have a look because photos and pictures don't do it justice to how invasive it is. And it and they've got a big gym, they've got a big dance, a big area upstairs, they've got everything there. Yeah, I appreciate the um, invite, actually. Um, you know, I think the important thing is, is when we get to discuss the application, um, that you know that it's not our decision, it is uh, the Buckinghamshire Council's decision, yeah. but, you know, all of your comments can be included in, with ours. Um, so, yeah, no, I do appreciate you coming along and speaking. Thank you. Thank you. Um, are members happy when we'll go into the meeting now, but are members happy that we bring this application forward Agreed. so that the, our yeah. residents don't need to stay for the whole thing? Agreed. Yeah. Um, Thank you. I, I, Chairman, could I beg you I speak now because I can't speak on the application to tell you what actions I've taken, um, if that's okay, because I, I cannot prejudice my view because I'll be sitting on the application. I, I've really enjoyed listening to the views of the constituents. When contacted about this, I raised an enforcement issue on this because there is no planning consent. And I've raised a case with the enforcement officer 
um, because there was no planning application, no planning application agreed. So they were my actions. Thank I you. believe I copied the constituents into that so that they knew that I'd taken those actions. I'm awaiting, um, I'm awaiting the findings of that. My view is it's very complex, isn't it, when an application has been all but constructed and mm -hmm. and, and, and in, in, it, in it we are really looking at a retrospective application, which tonight you'll be looking at a retrospective application, which is not how it should be done. But that's what I've done no. so far, so the committee knows. I've copied, I believe, Catherine into that correspondence out of a courtesy. Thank um, you. But that's so you know what actions I've done as a Buckinghamshire councillor. Of course, you know I can't comment on the application because and give a view because it would prejudice my opportunity to give a proper view on it at the committee. Um, okay, I well, I appreciate you do doing what you've done so far, Robin, and I'm sure the residents appreciate that as well. So, yeah. thank you. Thank yeah, you thank you. Okay, so um, is there any apologies? No, there's Mark wants to speak. Pardon? I'm sorry? Mark is trying to speak on that issue. No, we haven't started the item. Sorry, I'll, I'll wait till you come to the item. Okay, thank hey. you. So, any apologies, Nina? Apologies from County Councillors White and Mills. Okay, thank you very much. Um, any declarations of interest? Councillor Harvey? Yeah, with reference to the item about demolition of the Swan practice on the hospital grounds, to say I'm a, I'm a, I'm a member of the, uh, I'm a trustee of the League of Friends of the hospital. All right, thank you. Make sure that's noted. Appreciate that. Okay, so we'll bring forward um, item 6.1 and then we'll go back to item um, three after we've done this. So 6.1, we've got the Water Mill Health and Leisure Club. Uh, we've just heard some residents' comments and um, I'll open the floor. Councillor Cole wanted to speak first. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Yes, thank you to the Richardsons and, and to Lynn Richards for coming and telling us about the problems. I think we're already aware of them from the amount of objections, in fact, 14 objections as of six o'clock this evening. Uh, the majority of them from Lark Close, from Kingfisher Close, but of course, the people it affects most are the Richardsons and the Cushways. And I, I, I know your parents um, very well. June, I used to be a member of the gym. I know, and, I recognise you. <laughs> and all the work that was done on getting uh, Borton Mill to, to what it is today. And I have to say, I'm quite appalled at that's what happened here. But this is an example of not being good neighbours. And mm. um, the fact they did it without planning permission, it's part retrospective, I think, also goes against it. Um, no notices have been put up still yet. By, that's a fault of Buckinghamshire Council, um, of course, not, not of the applicant, but um, everything's against this. The light pollution, the noise pollution, um, and of course, the flood risk. That there's a huge flood risk here, as I'm sure the Richardsons have already said in their, their comments to the council. So on all these grounds, um, I propose that we object to this and we either attend or we um, ask a Buckinghamshire councillor to call it in on our behalf, depending on where we're going to be um, mm. in a few weeks' time on this. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, right, Councillor Triad is hand first, then Councillor Harvey. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, uh, yeah, so looking at this application, um, I think it, it just gives us a um, objection straight away from it. First of all, because of uh, retrospective, people can do it, but it's a it's a grey area where then the um, the unitary council then has to go back and assess whether they would have objected to it or passed it in the first place. But to do it in the first place really leaves us, and we have it so many times here, we see this, there's no extra money that they have to pay, and it's just a disgusting and, and uh, deceitful way of going about business uh, to get planning uh, by putting it in first of all. We've mentioned the lighting and the, um, uh, that effect. 
these are going to be fixed to the building, pointing away from their building. So the people it's going to affect are the surrounding areas. They haven't put up uh, extra floodlight poles at the edge of their property going back towards their building, which would be not perfect, but a better solution. Um, they've put up a fence. They've now got to lower that fence because um, it's higher than permitted. And they say they will put AstroTurf on it to reduce the sound um, going across. But I'm afraid in another area, they say that AstroTurf is good, it's hard wearing, it is not a sound deadening material. Therefore, putting it on a fence will not make any difference. Um, Borton Park has a lot of um, ad hoc activities going on there, which makes noise. That may not be uh, welcomed by uh, the local residents, but at least they're temporary. This is a permanent fixture, and we don't want permanent outside areas where people will be shouting commands at uh, various uh, keep fit fanatics, or maybe not fanatics, but keep fit people to, um, uh, to do their exercises. So uh, I am against it. Thank you very much. Councillor Harvey and then Carolyn. Yeah, unsurprising, I'm against it too, obviously, for all the reasons stated. But I would also add that I'm wondering if it offends against the Party Wall Act, um, given that this, this mm. development has encroached upon the uh, boundary between the two, the two properties. And therefore, that Party Wall Act exists yeah. to ensure that neighbours do talk to each other when such developments um, are happening. Um, so planning aside... I think an advice for the people who've come along is look into the Party Wall Act um, as well. They may well have conflicted against it too. Yeah, no, that's a very good point, Cass Harvey. Yeah. All right, Carolyn? Uh, thank you, Chairman. Yes, um, from the Buckingham Society's point of view, we are very opposed to this. Uh, we've had lots of instances here at the mill of supporting the residents next door against uh, very unsatisfactory uh, proposals. And this is clearly a case of con contravening GP8 in ABDLP, which says planning permission will not be granted where the proposed development would unreasonably harm any mm. aspect of the immunity of nearby residents. Um, and I think there is no doubt about it that the harm for nearby residents on, on this proposal far outweighs any potential benefits. So mm. we are, are very much opposed to it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so I get the very strong feeling that we are opposed to this. Um, so we'll, we'll object on um, all the points made. So lighting, music, flooding, uh, the fact that they've already built it. Um, and I'm sure Catherine can come up with lots of other planning reasons <laughs> why we object. <laughs> um, can I have a show of hands um, that we're going down that line so we're objecting to this application, please? That is unanimous apart from Robin. Yeah. He's abstaining. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so um, yeah, you're very welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting. But if you do want to pop off, you can. <laughs> thank, you, thank you very much. Thank you for letting us yeah, speak. Thank you for listening to us. And I would just say the turf's down. Everything's down. There's, you know, there's nothing not done in the job. Turf's been down for months. Right. Yeah, despite the enforcement officer coming in September when I first reported it, they've just ignored everybody. Gosh. Mm. Chairman, would you like me to call his application in? If you are volunteering for that, I'm volunteering Dr. rather than having a long discussion about it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> let, let, let me let me agree that I will call the application into committee. Thank oh, you. Yes, yes um, please, Councillor Testry. Yeah, just just so that uh, the neighbours understand, we have a bit of an issue with getting our uh, shire, our Buckinghamshire councillors, to call applications in, and that's the route that we have to go down yeah. uh, to for us to be heard. And um, yeah, it's only Robin and Warren that are currently really doing anything for us. Mm -hmm. So we have this long discussion later on about who should we ask. And uh, so the fact that Robin's offered is uh, a good start. Thank you very much, Robin. Thank you, Robin. <laughs> Thank you, Robin. <laughs> Thank you, Robin. 
That's all right. You take care. Thank you very much. Thank you, much. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye bye. Bye bye. 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 <laughs> Okay, let me get the agenda back up. Right, so we're going to go back to item three, the minutes. I'll be happy to receive the minutes uh, to put before full council on the 17th of May. Yep. Propose, we agree. Thank you very much. Item four, 4.1, to receive a verbal report from Councillor Cole on the VALP hearing of 15th of April 21. Over to you, Mark. You're muted, my love. There you go. Thank you, Lisa. Um, yes, I attended the um, Trans Buckingham Transport Strategy hearings, not one, but two, started on Thursday morning, ran out of time, which we've had before with the Inspector of VALP, and had to be the herd then on Friday afternoon together with the Maids Morton Transport application. And after I finished, I think with your permission, uh, Chairman, under 4.2, we'll hear from Carolyn on that. Mm. Um, if I could just thank our officers, um, Catherine, Paul and Sheena for their assistance in this. Um, I attended the further draft VALP hearings into questions which the inspector had for Buckinghamshire Council. Since this process started in 2017, there's been 2,458 representations to VALP hearings which had raised 120 questions which the inspector had put to the council. You'll be aware he originally rejected the draft VALP for lack of consultation by Aylesbury Vale mm -hmm. District Council with neighbouring authorities in MK, Luton and Bedfordshire and their unmet housing needs. But other questions were about transport strategies in Aylesbury and Buckingham. And it was the latter which I attended on your behalf. And it was being heard in conjunction with Maids Morton's transport strategies Giving our evidence, I told the inspector that despite his summary, Buckingham did not want to be removed as a second settlement. I said, we're committed to upholding and delivering our made neighbourhood development plan and would be disappointed to lose second settlement status. This would be the unfortunate consequence of the inadequate transport strategy being proposed. That is, no strategic planning for a Western Relief Road. I told him Buckingham Town Council has two main objections, which has still not been resolved by Buckinghamshire Council's responses. These are that one, the much modified Buckingham transport strategy and T3 policy are not fit for purpose. And accordingly, we no longer recognize T3. And secondly, that this highly selective quick fix to the issue of the Western Relief Road jeopardizes Buckingham's placement in the settlement hierarchy as a second settlement as it prevents positive planning for development of housing to ensure vitality and plan growth to provide infrastructure to secure provision of services in the north of Buckinghamshire. I then provided evidence of the impact that including Buckinghamshire Council's three allocated housing sites, BUC 046, which is Ozier Way, BUC 043, which is Maids Morton Phase 3, and double M006, which is Walnut Drive in Maids Morton, would all have on the centre of Buckingham in terms of traffic. As a potential solution, I said would be the removal of all three until a comprehensive and robustly evidenced transport strategy can be prepared. Nick Freer for Hallam Land Management, with whom we'd already consulted, supported Buckingham's argument saying he had sympathy for our neighbourhood development plan, which was sound and was delivering housing where we wanted it, but it was not being made clear to developers what or how much their Section 106 contributions would be going towards. He too acknowledged the need for a Western Link Road before sites could move forward. Finally, in response, Buckinghamshire Council's representative, Suzanne Ormsby QC, said that her council remained committed to bringing forward the 720 homes on those three sites, and that there were other mitigations which could be used to address the town centre traffic problem. And that's where we left it. And if I could hand over to Carolyn, because what she's going to say interlocks very much with what I've just said. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, Mark. And absolutely, Carolyn, if you want to continue. Yeah. Um, indeed, thank you everyone. I'm not sure how many of you actually watched the proceedings that were 
uh, as Mark says, went on over two afternoons. But what emerged on the Friday afternoon in relation to the Buckingham transport strategy um, was the complete uh, conflict between the mitigations that are proposed for the Walnut Drive application, which is to deter traffic from using Mill Lane Acre College Farm Road to the A422 junction um, and send traffic down through the town centre, which of course is completely contrary to the Buckingham Transport Plan. Mm. Uh, the inspector did not seem to be aware of this, these mitigations to deter traffic. So there was quite a long session um, revealing what highways officer had said back in for the redetermination last year is that they did not want to disrupt the uh, junction of, with the A42 as a strategic highway network. And therefore mitigation was required both at that end, but more importantly at the church end of Maids Morton, where Mill Lane begins off Church Street, uh, to, to deter traffic from using it. And those alternative routes that Jacobs Modeling produced in their 20 20 report uh, indicate all traffic from BUC 043 and MM 006. I wonder how many more times I will have to say these numbers. Um, will indicate that traffic from those uh, sites have alternative routes. Well, the only alternative route, bar going up the A413 through Akeley to Northampton, um, is actually Mill Lane and, and down to the A422, which as I say, the mitigations in place for the application for the Walnut Drive site completely refute. So we have a bit of a stalemate here. Um, and we were also arguing, this is my point of view from this Buckingham Society, this is a nonsense. It makes complete nonsense of the transport strategy. It makes complete nonsense of these two allocations to the north of Buckingham, where, which have to come in through the town centre. Whereas the Buckingham Neighbourhood Plan allocated site of um, Brackley Road 051 actually is, is <laughs> despite the disadvantages pointed out by Jacobs modelling, is could be 125 houses as opposed to 300 and a lot of that traffic could go via Bridge Street to London Road plus it's a flatter route and uh, they seem to de de determine to put uh, particularly the Morton Road site to make a cycleway down Morton Road. I, I have yet to see anyone cycle down Morton Road after its junction with Addington Road. It becomes, as you know, steep and narrow. It, it, it's, a, it's an absurd suggestion that this is going to offer um, act, alternative travel plans to ve vehicular use. What else can I say about this? <laughs> the other thing that I think should be pointed out is that Suzanne Ormsby on the Thursday session, as she saw the uh, questioning going on about the allocation of Walnut Drive, uh, intervened to say that they had the S106 agreement oven ready. She didn't actually use those words, but she said um, they had reached agreement that very morning and it would be signed this week. Now, the S106 was subject to much comment at draft stage from not only Buckingham Town Council, but Mates Morton Council, Parish Council, Akeley Parish Council, Leckhamsted Parish Council, as well, of course, as the Action Group. Um, and it, it seems to us completely essential that this S106 agreement is not signed until we have seen what is proposed in it, which is presumably the mitigation measures to deter traffic using Mill Lane mm. and the consequences that uh, results in for the Buckingham transport strategy. So you can see the dichotomy here. Um, anyone, yes, <laughs> let someone else have a, have a say. <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much for that, Carolyn. Okay, Bobbin. Well, firstly, can I thank Caroline and, um, and Mark for attending the meeting and yeah. it was a long drawn out affair and I thank the office for it. Yeah. It's evident, isn't it, that the Section 106 agreement has been hurried along. 
if you were to draw a Section 106 agreement, you would want to be assured that the mitigations of traffic were in that Section 106 agreement, which would be sufficient to cater for the yeah. traffic from that development. Clearly, we've had no sight of that, mm -hmm. which is wrong. The other element which was talked about either by Mark or by Caroline is the Western Relief Road, which mm -hmm. originally when Buckinghamshire Council put County Council put through the proposals for the Western Relief Road, within that original document, which was the transport strategy for Buckingham, all contributions from similar developments would contribute to the cost of the Western Relief Road. And pooling that was going to be. Um, to to facilitate that. Now, I've seen nothing in any transport for Buckingham strategy which caters for any mitigation than the Western Relief Road, because it at least moves traffic from one side to the other. But nothing can mitigate for Mill Lane. Um, mm -hmm. And to put it in as one thing, we won't be putting traffic down there, then to put it in for another thing to say is, is, is nonsensical. Mm -hmm. um, where we go as a town council in assisting in this in a cooperative way, I think that's a separate issue in the sense that I think this application now has stepped beyond what it was before when it was an application within a parish. It's now actually starting to possibly, we easily suggest, damage the Buckingham neighbourhood plan's aspirations, the, the planning of Buckingham's transport infrastructure, and I think now we're moving into new territory with this. How that stands legally, or what we could do legally on that, I think we need to seek advisement. But I do think we need to start being party now to challenging this in some form or fashion. Because um, before it was an easy stage when it was the section, the planning application was working its way through. There are some things with this, but was missed when the application went through in its original thing they the committee failed to go for the obvious option which was to um delay until such time as the veil plan was a made policy now the veil plan isn't still a made policy and this application has been done on um on powers of a veil plan which has been kicking around since 2013 amended en route so all of this is tragic but the things that mark said about ozy way mm. well of course we the council's called that to committee ozy way was sought to be amended at the stages it went through council i put an amendment to the council to withdraw ozy way as as building for houses and put it back in as um industrial which it was meant to be that was yeah. turned down and the thing that we've all been, and we keep saying it, is out of all this, the affordability levels of housing have never been discussed at that hearing in any way, shape or form, because mm -hmm. those Councillor Hirons and Councillor Cole tried to represent us on that and, and it was never heard. Yeah. So I think we, I would like to suggest that we ask the town clerk's advice on what powers we have legally if we wish to get involved at this stage and where we should take that decision now or after PERDA, um, because the, 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 we need advice to be able to take decision after PERDA, if there are legal grounds now that this application would prejudice us as a community. And I don't think we can take that decision today, this side of the election, but I would like us to be ready to make a decision on his advice after the election, after he's done some proper research, because... Okay, let's ask him then, Paul. Cool. Well, I, I'm happy to come to the next meeting, um, having worked with Sheena and Catherine to work out what the options are. I certainly haven't got the options immediately, but we, we're happy to investigate and come back with a robust suggestion if there is anything for the next meeting. But, All right, thank but, you. It's because I don't think we can make that decision now, this side of the election, because we're in Perda. We need no. to have a report That's given fine. to us to support that, because I think it's crossed, the, it's crossed the Rubicon now, hasn't it? Yeah, well, Paul said that he'll bring a report, so that's brilliant. All right, Councillor Cole, then Councillor Harvey. Yep. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I want to make a prop proposal tonight mm -hmm. regarding the Section 106 agreement. We were ambushed with this on Friday. 
Um, all of us uh, agreed on that, including Hallam, um, when Miss Ormsby said, you know, it was oven ready and was going to be signed this week. The Walnut Drive has not yet been approved by the new VALP. It could yet be withdrawn if it goes against the inspector. So mm -hmm. that is being rushed through in unseemly haste. And the fact there's also this conflict between our traffic plans for Buckingham and the planning permission traffic plan for um, for Walnut Drive, they're diametrically opposed. And, I th and I'm quite well aware, if Carolyn told me this afternoon, that Mays Morton Parish Council and the um, action group are together making an approach to Buckinghamshire planning, I think to um, Sue Pilcher, to um, ask that this is not signed until this matter has been sorted out. And I propose that this council joins in that request with, uh, with those two groups, that this is not signed until the planning matters are all resolved to everyone's satisfaction. I'd be happy to second that. Yeah, I think that's a very sensible proposal. Okay, um, right, Councillor Harvey, and then we'll vote on your proposal, Mark. Yeah, obviously I support Mark's proposal there. Um, it, it does seem to me, and we'll talk about this later in the agenda as well, is that the planning officers uh, within Buckinghamshire Council are maybe just getting a bit too big for their boots yeah. and actually ignoring um, not only us as councillors, um, and indeed Shire councillors, but also more importantly, the people of the area. Um, and that concerns me greatly. And we need to make sure that there are no constitutional changes which will give them more power than they already seem to have. Um, so I would just make reference to that, but later in the agenda, we'll talk about that. Um, but obviously I support Mark's, um, Mark's motion. Um, just a question, I may have missed this, what happened to the 35%, 25% affordable housing? Is that not up for discussion? Have we missed the boat on that? Are we, or are we being simply bulldozed, bulldozed on that as well uh, by the VAL? Yeah, if I could answer that, Chairman. Yes, um, yes. we were told absolutely clearly by um, Louise Sinjin Howe, who's the inspector's programme officer, that we cannot revisit that. The inspector, although he said he'd heard everyone, um, hadn't heard myself and uh, our then clerk Chris Wayman which is July 2017 and we've never had the chance since mm. to, to put that forward but um, that's something we'll obviously be dealing with in our, our revised neighbourhood plan um, and of course the other thing just while we're talking about the neighbourhood plan if we can get these three sites withdrawn then we would of course um, once there is a strong transport strategy which includes the western Link Road, we, we would attempt ourselves in the neighbourhood plan under Sheena's guidance to, to bring forward those, uh, the, the sites we want, particularly BUC 051, which is um, the one on the Brackley Road, which has been the cause of all these problems about lack of housing. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, I just say that I was going to go to the vote on Mark's proposal that was seconded by Robin. So can we have a show of hands for those who agree to that proposal, please? Uh, that is unanimous. Thank you, everybody. Um, through, through you, Chairman, I propose that, yep. that we um, bring some information back to the next council. The other town clerk said, yes, he would do. We didn't actually agree that as an action. And just as a point of information, it is a public record. When the Vale Plan uh, was going through council, I put an amendment to the Val plan asking them to reinstate 35% and it was voted down. So um, yeah, that's why we are where we are. Yeah. Um, but I think we need to clear that up because we're asking the town clerk to do a body of work for us, Chairman. Well, I, th I think the town clerk agreed that he was going to bring a report back. I don't, I think that's absolutely fine. That okay, we can long trust... as that's fine, long as that's fine. Okay. Yeah, we, we, that was agreed about five minutes ago. Okay. Right. So, um, yeah, thank you, Carolyn, Catherine, Paul and Mark and Sheena for all your hard work on this. I know that all the members really appreciate that. Definitely. OK, so um, item five, action reports. Does anybody have anything to raise on the action report? Councillor Cole? Um, yes, on the first page, Well Street, Bollard, 
The temporary bollard mm -hmm. is still there in the conservation area. We are now one year and four months since it was reported. This is getting beyond a joke. Um, the good news, though, is that the car with the advertising sign at the Fletchley Road roundabout has actually gone. <laughs> Do, do we know why that's gone, Paul? Do we know if that was transport or...? I've not heard anything. I saw okay. a yellow notice on it. Ah! Yellow notice. All right, that'll be no tax then. That'll be police, won't it? We took them long enough to notice it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. OK, brilliant. Um, right, so anything else on the report, actual reports members want to raise? No. Um, I don't think I had anything on here. No. Okay. So item six, our planning applications. So we've gone through one and two, which is bought and mill. So we're straight on to three. 42 Mallard Drive. First floor extension to enlarge an existing bedroom. Would anybody like to speak on this application? No. Are we in favour of this application? Hands up. In favour. Uh, that's unanimous. Thank you. Just to note, there's no notice, a yellow notice on the. Well, there's only. I think we've got two, haven't we, Catherine? On yeah. the on the whole of these lists, so our disclaimer will go beforehand. Mm -hmm. Sorry, yeah. Councillor Harvey. Just for, yeah, my just, assurance, for just for my assurance, Chairman, I, I just note that I will be abstaining on all these applications so I don't keep yeah. interrupting the meeting. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Harvey. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, just to affirm the point is the young analysis are really important. And we had evidence of that this evening, didn't we, with the people who came along. Um, of something that had been done without without any due notice. So I think we need to write it in big, bold letters that these other notices are really important because people need to know what's happening in their locality. And we saw evidence of that tonight. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. OK, 6.4. We've got Harpen and Building Society, 23 Market Hill. Um, they want a change of use premises from retail to takeaway. So I'll open the floor for discussions. So Councillor Try first, and then Councillor Rao. Uh, thank you. Um, I'm not particularly in favour of this. It is a congested area. Yes, it would um, utilise that uh, empty um, retail plot, but um, I think it would be at the detriment of that small a uh, highly concentrated old area of town. Mm. Um, some things that I'm worried about is if it does go ahead, it's the maintenance and policing of the items that they've asked to be put in, such as the noise of the extractor fan. Nobody will police it afterwards. The charcoal filter of the extractor fan. Nobody will police that it's in and working and been cleaned and maintained. Um, the uh, waste, nobody will police that they will put it inside, take it out at night and move things around. So although they sound good on paper now, I think in the future things can get a little bit uh, hazy as uh, business picks up, etc. It is a congested uh, traffic area by foot or by car. So having... Um, uh, extra footfall there uh, will be problematic. Thank you. Thank you very much, Martin. Okay, Anthony was next, and then I'll take Mark. Thank you, Chair. Um, first of all, um, they refer to it as uh, a takeaway initially, and then it's an eat in uh, takeaway. So perhaps they should make their minds up on that. Um, the times, 12. Uh, midday, 10 in the evening. Why on earth 10 in the evening? Because if you're looking to do good trade, you want the pubs when they turn out to come and buy your takeaway because that's a, a busy little time. So even though they say that they want that time, 
um, I suspect that's going to slip. And in fact, it even says in the application, the opening hours and closing hours are unknown at the moment. So mm. they're contradicting themselves. We've already talked about the rubbish situation, I think, at some length. Um, and also, if people are going to pop in for takeaway, uh, I think it's naive to think that they will go into Cornwall Meadow Park car park or somewhere like that and then walk up. What they want to do is stop as close as possible. And I can quite easily see the property of Mr. and Mrs. Grace just opposite in that area. They're going to get loads of cars parked, albeit temporarily, but it's going to be busy and, and not conducive. Uh, delivery vehicles of any size are going to have fun and games getting up there, stopping, unloading and so on, however efficient they are. Mm -hmm. um, so all in all, I would have thought this was a very inappropriate use for this building. And I certainly would be voting against it going through. Thank you very much. Okay, Mark. Yep, thank you, Lisa. Um, yes, it's got a lot of problems against it from this point of view. But they make various assertions, including one that this is not in the town centre. Well, last time I looked, it was very much the town centre. Um, <laughs> where it is at the moment, next to the post office. Um, Henry Squires is a neighbour, and he's made a very, very um, long and well-reasoned objection to this, partly to do with the fact the road gets blocked for periods of up to half an hour while delivery lorries load and unload. Uh, they claim there's off-road space they can use opposite on, on the gravel. Henry says, um, no, that belong 23 Market Hill belongs to me. It's for private use and is most definitely not available for this purpose. Um, he also draws attention to the dropping off of customers, um, picking up, dropping off, delivery services. If they have delivery services, where are they going to put the, uh, the motorbikes, the delivery type bikes or mm. vans? Um, but the biggest problem of all, I think, is going to be the, the waste storage. Um, yeah. I sent the committee photographs, which I took this morning of Chua, the tour, which is absolutely jam-packed with a dozen bins at the moment, two more outside the post office. And th this is going to be even more bins when they have this. Apparently, they're only going to be collected once a week. So all this waste food is going to, going to sit there unless they do something else. And I noticed that environmental health, they want, they've got a number of uh, things they want done. They want a ventilation uh, scheme submitted. They want a waste storage scheme submitted. Um, and generally, everything goes against it because of this confined space there, and there just isn't room for the activities that they want. Finally, um, three, uh, two steps up into this building, which needs mm. handrails, so not conducive uh, to pe people with disabilities. So um, it, I would uh, join um, Anthony in voting against this. Yeah. Okay, so I'm getting the general feeling that we'll object. Oh, sorry, Carolyn, go ahead. I really just wanted to add the Buckingham Society's voice to these um, objections to this application, which is clearly unsuitable, I think, for all the reasons that have already been mentioned, so I won't repeat them. The only one, perhaps, that hasn't been mentioned is litter. Uh, this is a congested yeah. public highway, and the, the litter associated with takeaway, let alone the bins themselves, which, of course, mm. are a big obstruction, um, it, it's just unhealthy, I mean, environmentally, it, it, it is, couldn't be a worse position. So they, we are very strongly objecting. Thank you. I think one thing that I, I noticed is their end time for 10 p.m. because I didn't want the neighbours to be disturbed, but then in their uh, report that they're going to be taking the bins out after the premises closes. So there's going to be noise to the neighbours when they take their litter out. Um, so. I think we've got uh, quite a few grounds to object, but if I can have a show of hands so that we'll object to this application, please. That's unanimous. No, no, hang on, so it wasn't unanimous. Yeah, yes, it was. I was. I was. I've got the dog looking out the window. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a euphemism, Paul? Uh, no, it isn't. <laughs> no. Yep. Okay. Okay. All right, um, 6.5, we've got 26 Shetland, a single story rear extension. Before you move oh, on, sorry, Mark. Yeah, um, just to say, um, 
Councillor Warren White is amongst those commenting and he has raised all these issues, so he would be ideal to ask uh, to call it in. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. All right, thank you. So uh, 26 Shetland, single story brick extension. Does anybody want to talk on this one, Martin? Yeah, thank you. Um, I've got no real objections to this, um, mm -hmm. except that the red line drawing on their drawing differs from the uh, Aylesbury Vale red line drawing. They go across the uh, um, uh, private road, I suppose it is, or shared road. But um, apart from that, um, it's out the back. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm easy with this one. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so um, well, no objections to this. Show of hands. That's unanimous. Thank you very much. Okay, 6.6. .6, we've got one pearl close garage conversion to form storage slash office space. Would anybody like to talk on this, John? Yeah, I think we should object to this. Um, because of the regulations that we've got in place about number of car parking spaces per household and given the size of the house, uh, taking away the garage, even though I know a lot of people don't use their garage, but nonetheless, we've got to think of the future um, of this house for this, and I think we should say no. Okay. Interesting. Carolyn? Yes, uh, we would agree with, with Councillor Harvey there because uh, the, also the, the arrangement for the parking is not actually very good for manoeuvring. And if you're going to use three cars in a line, which is what it would amount to, um, squish, squashed into what we know is a really small uh, driveway entrance, it's inevitably off-roading onto street in narrow streets in Lays Hill. I'm very sorry, but we don't think this is a good... Um, proposal. Okay. All right, so we've got, oh, Mark, sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm the opposite. Hi highways have approved it because they have a long drive with two parking spaces there. Um, I went up to have a look today. There's plenty of off-road room. Um, the only, you're not obliged to have three parking spaces for these houses. You are obliged to have two. Am I correct, Catherine? Are you, you, need, you do need to three altogether, but only two have to be within the curtilage. Okay. But if it's a shared surface street, that doesn't leave you a lot of room. I, I, I withdraw what I said then, thank you. Okay, so are you, are you supporting it or not supporting it, Mark? No, I'm, I'm withdrawing my, my support now. All right, Martin? Just to note that, um, that this is on Lace Hill, isn't it? Just to make sure yeah. I'm in the right yeah. place. Yeah, there are a number of uh, develop, uh, housing um, built there which have three inline parking spaces. Right. So we need to make sure that if that's an objection, that we want to object in that we didn't think it was a good idea in the first place, and creating another one is is going to make it worse because there are others already built purposely for that uh, in that way. Okay, John. Uh, I don't think there's room for three in line. Looking at the draw, looking at the the, the, the drawing, there's a, there's two cars there already. There there isn't room for a third one in line, even if even if that was feasible. This is this is removing one of the essential spaces for a house of this, this size, as as Catherine's just indicated. So I do I think we have no we have no choice but than to object. Yeah. Okay, so can we have a show of hands to object to this application, please? So. One, two, three, four, five. Those who are okay with this application, don't, not objecting. One. Abstentions. Two. Two. Thank you very much. Okay, our next one is 17 Gifford Place. 
So who wants to kick this one off? Mark? Thank you. Yeah, this is Give a Place on Page Hill. Um, mm -hmm. this, this is the subject of um, an appeal for non-determination, which the inspector found in favour of the applicants. Um, we originally opposed it on the grounds that it was um, a very big extension, it was large, it was out of character, um, it was a development of the site and it was detrimental to the street scene. Well, obviously the inspector overruled those objections, but they've now come back with amended plan, which puts yet, yet more on the front of the house. Um, we can only object to that bigger part, but again, I would, I would propose that we object to that because it's over development. Yes. Mm. Paul? I'd agree with that. And also, presumably, because even though they got the other one through non-determination, as they've now come in with a new application, they've reset the clock, basically, mm -hmm. haven't they? Yeah. So, uh, therefore, we are free to object to it and... Uh, because I think yep. that's the trouble. As soon as you get something, they want to put more and more. And then when they do it, the next door neighbour will want to do it. And eventually they'll end up building over Gifford Place or something. Uh, John? I think the size of the, of the development they're pitching for, I think we'd struggle to, to make it over development. And I think the, the report from Catherine already says that line, that street line, is already fairly higgledy-piggledy and is different from what it was originally built as. I Personally, I have no objections. Okay. Yeah, you're right. All the other houses have all got bits added to it already. Um, okay, so we'll have a show of hands then on this one. So those who object to the application, please show. One, two, three. Three. Four. 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 Thank you. Thank Those you for the weakling figures. <laughs> Those who don't object to this application, please show. One, two, three. Any abstentions? One. Thank you. Okay, our next one is 28 Border Lane. And Mark sent round some photographs earlier. I hope you've all seen them. Uh, who would like to kick this one off? Mark? Chairman, yes, I visited the site this morning to do the photographs. Um, Carolyn would know it as well as I do. It's on her bridal way. Um, the, <laughs> it's retrospective. This work was done during January. It is a massive fence. It's a Berlin Wall eight foot high, very, very thick timbers, supported by steel um, stanchions. Um, it's raised, it's higher than the, the brick wall, which is next to it. And what it has replaced is some um, iron, um, iron fencing, iron Victorian style fencing, which the rest of the estate has along that frontage, along the A421. I, looking at everything, I would assume it's been done because once they moved in, they found there was noise coming from the Bletchley Road roundabout, which it overlooks. You can see the fence at the moment from the Bletchley Road roundabout from the A421, but once the trees are in leaf, I think that will disappear. But they have also put a gateway in. My main concern about it, apart from the height of the fence, which goes against our, our guidelines, um, is the fact that they might have taken some public land there. And I think Carolyn might be in a better position to comment on that, because I don't really know that bridal way. Um, so that's my feeling at the moment. Okay. Thank you. Carolyn, do you have anything uh, to add? Yes, a little bit. Um, I, I do sympathise with the owners because they are absolutely adjacent to uh, the Brideway, as mm. as Mark says. Um, it, and it, it clearly, I suspect the noise is coming from uh, a very well-used route these days, not only with... Um, horses but bikes I mean you see bikes on these railways uh, they can struggle through the mud and of course a lot of pedestrians and runners have been using this track so I, I'm quite sure that um, they felt they need, did need to put up uh, a, a more um, substantial barrier than what had been proposed 
Um, we object to the height, actually, element of it, because as Mark says, it doesn't uh, abide by the, the rules. Um, but I think my observation is that the planting of laurel on the right-of-way side of this fence is very likely to encroach onto the public uh, mm. right away. Um, and, and that's regrettable. I can see why they've done it to try and sort of um, camouflage the, the, the yeah. very strident color of the fence, but it will mellow. Uh, and I just regret that it's a Portuguese, uh, well, not even a Portuguese, it's a Spanish laurel, I think. And, and uh, it will grow very large and will need lots of trimming, which means obviously, um, straying onto onto this footpath public public footpath right away mm. okay thank you um yeah my comment when i saw the photographs is i think they've partly done it for security reasons um now like i said when i moved into my house it was a spindly little three foot fence that we had going around the garden and we put in a six foot fence i think it's nearly six foot it's higher than me so um but that was for security reasons it wasn't for anything else so i'd imagine they've partly done it for that but um martin's got a hand yeah thank you i'm surprised that um a professional company uh allowed themselves to put in such a structure knowing that it didn't meet any planning permission um so that's uh, that's not well it is with the applicant because they've obviously employed somebody i think it looks more professionally put in than, than, than uh, yeah. by themselves. I don't actually have an, uh, an objection to the height because of where it is and it's not um, seen by anybody else uh, in that area. Uh, and I do think it is for security around there because uh, with a little spindly um, uh, little fence, it is mm -hmm. open to all elements at that point. Um, so I don't have an objection to that. I do have objection to the laurel um, or whatever planting they've put there. Looking at the official red line map, it is inside the green area allocated to that space. So the green area goes adjacent to the bridleway and the red line is within that uh, by, well, not by quite a while, but by a, a visible amount. Yeah. So therefore, they have actually planted on um, council land uh, and we don't want to be responsible for that in the future. And putting a gate in the back again, they then have to trespass over that council land to get um, out. So uh, if they want a high fence, then don't put a gate. Um, you know, you can't have everything that you want. So I'm... I'm objecting from it, but not from the height, but only from the planting. Okay, well, I don't know how to take that one forward. Um, so, okay, so hands up for those that object to this fence or to this application. Was that a question, John, or are you voting? Voting, okay. So this is to object to the application. One, two, three. One, two, three. Those who don't object to it. One, two, three. Abstentions. One, two. Okay, so I've got the cast in vote, haven't I? You have. Okay, I don't object. No objections. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Mark? In not objecting to it, could we ask Catherine to ask them to double check mm -hmm. the ownership of the land because it was actually the Buckinghamshire Council planning officer who said to Catherine she wasn't sure from the documents whether they had, in, had encroached or not. So yeah, it might be worth it if that can go on as a rider. Thank you. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, members happy for that? Yes. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so amended plans. We've got 6.9, a garage site on Pytal Present. Uh, who would like to kick this one off? Nobody. John? Uh, I think we object as per 
previous times, don't we? Yeah. Yeah, I can't see any any um, difference from what they what they put here. Agreed. So we're not changing our objections to this, are we? Let's, let's have a hand up. So those objecting still to this application. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Those who are happy for this application. Um, None. Abstentions. One. One. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, and um, so we've got not for consultation. Tree six point ten land to air to Market Hill. We can't we can't comment on these, but um, yeah, okay. Let me go back to the. We'll close down that one now. And back to the agenda. Okay, so we're right on to item seven, planning decision. Oh, sorry, Mark. I was waiting. Yeah, um, item 10, um, land to rear to Market Hill. I think, I know Catherine's already done an email vote, um, but this is quite, quite, quite unacceptable that they want to start pulling, ripping out trees before they've even got planning permission. Uh, that comes after you. Don't put the cart in front of the horse. You wait till you get your planning permissions, then you come back with the tree application, which can then be considered um in in due course um and anything else would be totally perverse yeah yeah i think we'd all agree with that comment yeah <laughs> okay so planning decisions would anybody like to talk about anything under item 7.1 there's another application I, uh, number 12 which Catherine added as a supplementary, supplementary. Oh, yeah, you're right. Sorry. Yeah, my bad. 24 Morton Drive. Absolutely right. Thank you, Mark. So uh, 24 Morton Drive, application for a lawful development certificate for re extension. Would anybody like to talk about this one? Kick it off. Catherine? Um, Underneath, not for consultations along with the trees. It's an ACL. Oh. And I did check and I can't see any reasons why it shouldn't be an ACL. The last four ACLs we had all turned out to need proper applications, but um, the PDRs don't appear to have been withdrawn from Morton Drive, so I think it's legit. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Sorry, Mark. It's doubling the size of the conservatory you can see in the Google Earth photograph there, but they've got, mm. they've got plenty of land there. It's not, not a problem, I think. Uh, I, I can't see we'd have any reason to object. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Okay. Right, let me go back up to seven point. Hold on. Okay. So does anybody want to talk about anything under 7.1? No, 7.2, planning inspectorate. We have um, Appendix C. Does anybody want to discuss anything to do with the, um, the Verney Post family practice? No? Now we're in Buckingham Society, anything? From you guys? No, we we made um, a submission at the time of the application, which will go forward to the inspectorate. We felt there was nothing further to add to that. And um, I've read Catherine's excellent resume, which seems mm. absolutely excellent. Yeah. Okay. Mark? Yeah, if I could just thank Catherine for disseminating our responses to that and um, replied so that the inspector will be aware of Buckingham Town Council's views now, so. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Catherine. <laughs> do you okay. want additional information sent then, or do you want to rest on our laurels? I think we're happy with what we've sent in. 
Awake chaps and chapesses. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Appendix D. Anything more to add to that one? Or are we happy with our responses for that? Yeah, agreed. Happy? Okay. All right, thank you. Item 8, 8.1.1.1, the Constitutional Constitution Review, proposals for changes to the Constitution, Appendix E. Would anybody like to talk about Appendix E? I was just going to talk about Item A, Chairman, Buckinghamshire Council members, just to make you aware that on the agenda which isn't really for discussing, but you may read it for your own information as councillors. There is a proposal to amalgamate um, the health and scrutiny committees with other authorities. I don't want to go into details tonight because of the nature of it, but I do think that you need to read that document. Um, it will be a very large overview and scrutiny committee. I don't want to go into details of it now, but it is a public available for you. I have asked to speak on it. I'm waiting until tomorrow to know where I've been accepted onto the speakers list on the item on the agenda. Okay. All right. Thank you for that, Robin. Mm. So nobody wishes to talk. Oh, Mark. Mark. Thank you. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, on the front page, paragraph 320, they talk about uh, changing the order of who's invited to speak at the first planning mm -hmm. meeting. It seems to me they've gone to a lot of trouble to try and make, try and fix something that ain't broke. You know, wh why mess the system? Mm -hmm. It works, works fine as it is. On the second page, um, I'm a bit concerned about paragraph 325, which considers adding additional paragraphs to provide, provide a procedure when the committee is minded not to follow the recommendation of officers including discretion for the chairman to adjourn to either later the same day or different day. If the committee overrules the officer's recommendation, that's how it should be. They shouldn't start playing around with it after that. Planning call-in um, 331 um, currently states that in 28 days of being notified of a planning application, members must use public access to notify the planning officer that they may wish to call in the planning association. Well, uh, John Harvey earlier this evening alluded to the... Uh, the delays in posting statutory notices. So they're going to have to tend to that. They're going to post those in a timely manner if they're going to start doing this. And we've got to make that very, very clear to the council. Bottom yeah. page, um, again, paragraph 331 under 15, consider amending the whole of paragraph 331, extending the opportunity to request a call in to planning committee to town and parish councils with material reasons with an undertaking to attend the meeting if referred to committee. That's the one we want. That's what we're fighting for. And yeah. they have acknowledged in, in that, that um, it's particularly the north of the county who previously had the right to call in planning applications to committee. Um, and they've said it was agreed this part of the constitution would be reviewed following concerns expressed by town and parish councils. And they're, they're saying it does offer the opportunity now for town and parish councils to request to call in the same opportunity currently afforded to unitary councillors so if they do adopt that um hopefully we've got what we wanted and um thank you to all our shower councillors who fought for that and most particularly councillor stutchbury yeah yeah and um also thanks to warren i think the, the you two guys have been the ones that have spearheaded this um, on our behalf, because we did ask you to do it, and uh, we're very grateful for that. So, yeah, Robin, do you like to speak on that? Yeah, I'll just speak on it. I, I, I obviously, we took the motion to council, which was mm -hmm. to meet the requirements of not just Buckingham Town Council, which was the wider council. The history of it was we met and discussed it. We were delayed from taking a motion to council um, earlier for various reasons because of COVID restrictions and whatever but mm -hmm. we did we did get it through council and it is amended and I went to the it went through the audit committee and the standards committee and the standards committee looked at the legalities of it and the audit committee discussed it in length at the last meeting 
I felt it was important to question the officers that what I was reading, the intentions within it, were to return to the situation where you could call application to committee and offer legal, both the legal officers attending, which is um, Nick Graham and the, who's um, many of us have become accustomed to, um, and the other officer gave complete assurances that that would take place. Now, what will happen if on Wednesday councils minded to agree this is at that point officers are going to go away and they've got to draw up terms of reference mm -hmm. because they couldn't agree terms of reference within the recommendation because once they've done it so what that will be is the working practice of how they will apply this in, in committee because they've got to change their terms of reference to meet the new terms of reference now, South Buckinghamshire, if this is agreed, will be getting something they've never had in South yeah. Buckinghamshire. All their parishes have never had these rights. And we'll be getting part 50 to just over 50 to 60 percent back of what we wanted. Now, all negotiations are a compromise. And I think that um, I have to say I worked to work closely up with um, the Buckingham East Councillor to make sure that we actually delivered this and and it just shows that if you take a proper approach to these things you sometimes can get the what i would call the right thing forward but of yeah. course until council agrees on the 21st i can see no reason why they won't agree it i'm hoping the cabinet member will be speaking to it as i have indicated i wish to speak to it the strange rules of buckinghamshire council's constitution is they won't let me know till tomorrow night um, whether i'm speaking on it even though I've requested to, but um, I look forward to not having to have so many necessitate of calling and, and yeah. some um, councillors having some autonomy over their decisions and, and this uncomfortable position that we've all been placed in where yeah. um, it's put Buckinghamshire councillors sometimes adverse to the wishes of the town council and that cannot yeah. not be understated. Yeah, no, and, and I think we all appreciate that the extra workload that the shire councillors that have worked with us have had. So uh, what, what I'm, what I'm unclear of, Chairman, is all the callings would have been under the old constitution, and we've got yeah. lots of those. So they will have to be done because law doesn't work retrospectively. So they'll have to apply under the old constitutional, but then the new stuff may come into play in June, stroke July. So um, it may mean that um, the new council will be able to be act more independently, which has got to be a good thing. Definitely. OK, thanks for that, John. Yeah, before I say what I want to say about all these changes, I'd like mm -hmm. to ask the town clerk just for his legal opinion. Is it okay. correct in this constitution that the service director, that was the officer, is the one who decides which planning applications are considered by a committee or not does the, and the chair is simply consult you know considered or consulted is that correct are there arrangements which could mean that the chair and the service director would have you know, like equal power to call something in or, or put it on the agenda there's, there's no reason for that not to be the case if that's in the constitution i can't think of a reason to say that's not legally appropriate okay OK, well, I'm, I'm going to I'm probably not going to be popular by saying all of this, but I actually don't think this is going to work. And the reason I think it's going to work is because I think the service director in lots of different places has been given quite a lot of power to determine uh, what is and is not discussed. And whilst we may be happy that we now have our own route through mm -hmm. to objecting to uh, uh, planning applications straight through to the uh, planning officers rather than to go via one of the uh, shire councils like robin or warren or whatever i actually don't think it's going to work very well because i think there's all these overall changes give a heck of a lot of power or i think too much power to the, the chief planning officer or service director as they're called here in the constitution i'll give way in a second robin so i i, I am just very very cautious about this now the proof will be in the pudding i i, mm -hmm. I concede that and I may just be um, 
uh, fearing something that will not happen. But I do fear that when there will be times in the future where we want to really object to something, but we will be denied, um, denied that. So I think at the very least, the chair of the, of, the, of the committee should have an equal status in terms of deciding what is and what is not on the agenda. That's not currently the case under these constitutional arrangements. All they get is a chance to influence the service director, but the actual buck stopped with the service director, not with the chair um, of, of the council. And that, to my mind, makes this a officer-led institution around planning, not a member-led issue around, around planning. In terms of um, item nine, the, the, the sequence of speakers, why is the applicant always last? That, yes. to my mind, that, to my mind, always gives the applicant the last word and a yeah. chance to kind of pick up all the points and summarise them very carefully, because these are very skilled people yeah. who represent yeah. the applicants <laughs> often at these committees. And I don't think that should be the case. Mm. I think the last word should go to the people themselves, the neighbours or whoever it is that's objecting, and to the parish council. I think we should have the last word, not the applicant. If any, the applicant should come first. And if they won't accept that, then it should be done randomly. Um, it should not be done always where the applicant mm. has the last word. With regards to item 11, I'm looking at my notes and looking at the notes on here. Um, in terms of, um, I think this needs to be more flexible. There seems to be bringing in a level of, of, of uh, rigidity as to who could answer the question, which sometimes, mm. you know, if, I don't know, say um, Mark and, and Catherine are down there and Mark's done maybe the main presentation, mm -hmm. there may be a question which Catherine would be able to answer very well and very eruditely, is what I would fully expect. But under this, this constitutional change, Catherine would have to sit there stum while Mark did his very best. I'm sure he'd do a good job nonetheless, but in some instances, Catherine would be better. This would make that not possible. And I think there's a degree of rigidity in this that, again, is disenfranchising the voice um, of parish um, and town councils. With regards to item 12, um, in terms of the uh, procedure for um, the, I'm looking at this one, greater clarity of the procedure of followed circumstances. Um, this should apply to all, not just the ones where where the decision taken um, is is to do with objecting to what the officers have recommended. If there's a desire to maybe adjourn to later in the day, that should be both a positive and a negative decision. It can't just be for the ones the officers are fed up the council have taken a different view to them it should be that it ought to be possible that even if a decision is taken um to go along with the officers it should still be possible if the chair so wishes to adjourn to a later in the day or another day it shouldn't just be for the case of where the officer's recommendation has been has been objected now 13 made me um made me laugh because what the heck does that mean it's complete gobbledygook it needs to be far 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 simpler language um, and it's so caveated as to make it meaningless you feel like you're going to be up against a battery of lawyers as to whether you can actually call something in or not for the shire councillors or indeed for us that needs to be written much more plainly and and simply mm -hmm. um, with regards to item 14 uh, in terms of the recovery officer to perform councillors when a call in requested um, I think they should have to give a material explanation, not simply we've decided in not to take this to committee. I think the officers should have to say, and these are the reasons why. They are very concerned that when we object to an application, we have to give material reasons. Fair enough, that's absolutely fine. And we always seek to do that, of course. But I think if they say, no, it doesn't need to go to committee, they too should have to give material reasons as to why that is the case as well. Currently, they can just say, eh, I didn't get there. Um, that's not right. That's again favouring the officers over the members and not giving the officers and not giving the members, us parish and town councillors, or indeed um, the, the shire councillors, a full crack of the whip. Yeah. Um, with regard to Elson 14, I've got down here, um, it also gives a veto. If they say that all three shire councillors for that ward must agree, that, that's giving one shire councillor the right of veto. That is not democratic. That needs to change um, as well. Um, and also what's glaringly absent from this is any voice of the members of the public. The members of the public might have signed a petition in their hundreds 
an application, but nowhere in the constitution is that even given credence at all. That is not right. That needs to be built in in some way. If the petitioners um, of a ward um, are objecting to an application in large numbers, they should have some right to call it in as well. It shouldn't just be down to councillors, either shire, parish or town councillors and so on. They must play a part as well. Now, with regards to item 15, in terms of um, uh, the request to call in by us, mm -hmm. um, again, I think this is narrower than what we've had at the moment. At the moment, we've got six or more councillors that we can contact. This way, we've only got one route in. So we don't really have that opportunity anymore. I guess we could still simply try and ask one of the shy councillors nonetheless. But this is narrowing the funnel. And the problem with that is that isn't just an issue about who has the whip hand, who has, this, who has the final say. It's also a question of bottlenecks. Because if there are maybe six applications that we want to object to, it's all going to have to go through one funnel. Um, and I think that's going to, that's going to reduce. Um, and I've got here, but here the majority should, are comfortable. Sorry, where was this survey done? It's, it cites some sort of notion that the majority are comfortable with, this, with, this, with, the, with the arrangements. Well, I don't remember there being a survey of parish and town councillors. If there is a survey and, I, and we missed it or I missed it, I'd like to see the evidence. Otherwise, you're saying, well, everybody in the world favours blah, 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 blah. Well, you can't just say that without some evidence. No evidence is given here in this report. Maybe it's buried elsewhere in the report, but we have not got sight of it. And I think we should be able to see that. Um, and with regards to item 16, um, it seems to me that efficiency is trumping democracy here. The need to kind of get through things quickly and slickly and so on is actually making democracy of less value. So for example, um, where local councils should have the right to decide in which committee. Why is that down to the officers to decide whether it's discussed by the local committee or by the strategic science committee? I think mm -hmm. it should always start at the local committee and if the committee wishes to, they can refer it upwards as it were to the strategic science committee. I don't think that should be an officer decision because I think there's deep politics in here that, that yeah. the politicians in the locality should be able to decide. Yeah. And finally, I know I've gone on a little bit, but I've gone through this in no, quite fine. detail. Um, item 17. I mean, I just laughed out loud. Let's just read it out. Where are we? Um, um, to determine those planning applications and other matters referred to and brought before the Committee of Consideration and Determination, which are not referred to the Strategic Science Committee or otherwise, come within the remit, remit of the Strategic Science Committee. Reason, reason, get this, Oh, more easily understood, utilising plain English. That is not plain English. <laughs> That's the antithesis of plain English. Most of this is not plain English. To, in, and to kind of invoke <laughs> the idea that that change is required because plain English is frankly ludicrous <laughs> and laughable and risible and every other word I can think of that says the same thing. <laughs> it's mad. They cannot do that. That is not plain English. So for all of those reasons, and I'm going to propose that we say this is not adequate, this is not fit for purpose. I hear what Robin said about a bit of compromise, but we have rolled over um, to what the officers want and they are going to have the whip hand and they will carry on doing what the heck they're doing. And we've seen that in some of the decisions that we've, we've, we've talked about tonight, where the officers seem, the officers seem to get the whip hand on things and we are simply playing catch up. It must be, planning must be both here um, and, and in the Buckinghamshire Council, member-led, not officer-led. This is an officer-led charter, and I think it's wrong, and we should reject it. Hold on, John. Yeah, um, before I come to you, Robin. Yeah, um, John. Thank you. I, I would have liked to have answered all the points one after the other, but, but um, which I could have done. Uh, even my memory is not good enough to remember that long diatribe and political speech um, about this in an election. But, but I, will, I will try and help you, John. I'll try and help you. The constitution that you're reading now is based upon the constitution which was amended. The constitution in itself was inadequate. The request that you made upon us was to seek a change in the constitution to allow the parish and town councils to have a calling. Yeah. I think we've achieved that. Now, what you didn't ask me to do 
and what you didn't ask me to do, which would have been a much more needier and, and large ascent, is to um, wait until the agreement had been done and gone to council, wait until the paperwork had been agreed, and then wait for your pronunciations on a structural change within the constitution of the council. Now, when it comes to the elements of officers' legal rights to determine where it goes to, they were all in the previous constitution constitution the trouble is john the previous constitution was drafted by a small clique of people who were in a room who drafted that constitution in rather a hurry because they had to get a constitution um, by vesting day which never happened which was the election which didn't take place on the 20 uh, last year so yeah, what we're facing here is, is a situation where primarily a small group of people who were probably going to retire as councillors were sat in a room um, drafting a constitution and neatly exercised their southern priorities on that constitution, removing the whole of the North Buckinghamshire from having what their says were. Now on the officers and the strategic sites, now I've questioned those elements, those are in keeping with what that constitution said and slightly amended, but giving a bit more weight. What there was discussions about the powers of the chairman in a meeting are quite large in the sense the chairman will not end a meeting at an officer's request. He'll end, he or she will end it at their request. Now, this isn't a perfect document. These amendments in many cases are rephraseologies of a previous element of the constitution. Now, what I wasn't asked to do, and I think it's um, unfair at this stage to say, now, would you go and uh, um, could you amend this? Because the only amendment I saw in my motion to council was to bring back the right for town and parish councils to call them in. Now, we've achieved that. Now, these elements of democratic creep, which I think is John's passion, and I think that's where he's coming from, we need to... The Constitution is not static. The Constitution of the Council is to be amended at all times. The reason it works is because it's being amended. Now, what we need to do is think rationally about this. And we've had a, and, and you had quite a long time point by point, and I would have liked to have done it point by point with you, John, not to we don't have a, We don't have enough time for that tonight, Robin. Well, no, but you gave John quite a long time, didn't you, Yeah, Chairman? but I um, give you to, quite a long time to speak yeah, as well. Yeah, but you're interrupting me, Chairman, while I'm talking. Which you is, interrupt uh, me as well. So. Yeah, I know that. That's fine. We do it all right. <laughs> um, but, um, but as I was trying to say, now, where, yeah. you, where you want to approach this in a constructive way, I think we need to we need to hone down on those areas of where you feel the Constitution has changed to the detriment, to the... Um, uh, and where it's not improved the constitution. Going back saying we are we are unhappy because of all these things which we never asked for is not going to look particularly um, professional. So I think if you're going to do that, we need to wait until the election's over. We need to sit down and go through this line by line. And if there is a possibility to seek an amendment, which is with the agreement of the majority because it's got to be with the majority. And I believe their consultation, now I did question who they consulted, um, <coughs> which was a fair point, John. Um, and they said they consulted um, chairs and officers of, of councils and different things. Now- Well, we didn't get sight of it at all, did no, we? No, That's no, a problem. No, no, Chairman, you didn't get sight of it. Now, can I, but, Robin, before you carry on, can I just say that it, the time is 10 to 10 and we've still got to uh, get through this agenda. I'm going to take on your point, your points on board in that the Constitution has been amended for the call-ins that we've asked for. The other parts that we didn't get sight of before, um, John's got good arguments for and against parts of those and... We can revisit this afterwards. That's where I'm suggesting, Chairman. That, yeah, that, but we're not going to be able to, to do that tonight because it's, it's, it's 10 to 10. We're not going to be able to do that tonight. So I'm going to call think... a halt on this. Thank you for um, 
for the work that you've done on it so far, Robin. I know that I'm feeling, I'm feeling it that. And, 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 and I think behind the election, it's quite uh, uh, and to, to raise these points. The constitution and that, that this paperwork's been out there for a long time in the audit committee. In the second committee. So I think we could have perhaps, um, if I'd had these points raised to me at an earlier point, I could have could have took them through the audit committee and questioned them there. Well, right. I have well thank, a thank you, Bill. We'll, but and we I, will have to big this at this afterwards because it's ten to ten now. Speak, you'll have to allow me to. No, I don't have to allow anything. It's ten to ten, and we've still got part of the agenda to get through. So that's a decision that I'm taking. Okay. So, um, okay, where are we? Um, oh God, I've lost my place now. Right. It's 8.2 is where we're at, Lisa. 8.2. Thank you. <laughs> I'm a bit weathered. Um, right, Catherine, what applications are we calling in? Well, Wharton Mill, Robin, is doing Harpenden, yeah. I'm to ask Warren. Pearl Close and Gifford Place have been opposed but not asked for calling. And then Robin's doing um, Pytle Crescent. Yes. Okay. Which I haven't had a response yet. Yeah, true. So do, you, right. do you think that Pearl Close and Gifford Place need to be taken to committee or just opposed for the time being with reasons? What do members think? Call in or just oppose? I would suggest just oppose. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. All right, just oppose. In a strange time. In, we're in between councils, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 8.3, we've got our list, our rolling list of um, opposed and attend and calling applications. Appendix F. Does anybody want to speak on that very, very briefly? No? Cool. Noted. Noted. Thank you. Item 9, Buckinghamshire Council Committee meetings, none and none. Noted. Item 10, enforcement. Any matters to raise for enforcement? Raised it earlier, Chairman. Thank you. Uh, East West Rail, item 11, is to receive information. I think noted. Uh, yeah. And the same for 11.2. Well, we've got receive and discuss an invitation to join a group of parishes. Um, who do you think that we should form part of the, I think we should personally, um, but Mark, hands up. Yeah, I, I just, just um, I think we sh should be part of this because we are getting already affected by the traffic from um, East Wales Rail and HS2. I don't think we can agree a representative tonight because mm -hmm. there are three of us here at this meeting tonight. One who definitely won't, and two who may not be on the council. Yeah. So could we leave a green representative until them after the election? Yeah, great. I'm more than happy for that. Yeah, Makes sense. brilliant. Thank you. Um, item 12, application to fell trees. Received the updated list. Noted. We, noted, yeah. Thank you. Street naming. To note the street naming has been sent for information. Oh, that they have sent for information. Postal address for Lace Hill Care Home. Can uh, I? Come in? Happy to know. Oh, sorry, John. Yeah. Yeah, I I don't know where they get the word Bentley Grange from. Um, hmm. It sounds a bit like something out of Billy Bunter or whatever. <laughs> um, uh, and I wonder whether we could persuade them. And this would be my suggestion that we call it some like Lace Makers Hall, because that would then fit in with Lace Hill, um, and and rather than call it Bentley Grange, I don't know if that's just a standard thing that the company that owns the care home wants or calls all their care homes Bentley Grange or something but I wonder if it's worth approaching them to see would they be interested if people agree with this to call it the Lace Makers Hall or something like that. Certainly write the letter and see. Yeah see I took it as that been that that's the, the company right. name. Um, no they don't seem to have a theme at all. Um, there's a there's a tendency to make it sound as though it's a stately home they've turned round, but um, uh. but <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> all right, I'll take Carolyn and then we'll be somewhere quickly. like Agatha Christie might have put a body. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Yes, I can certainly write to them and ask. Carolyn and Robin. I was just going to say that I think they've tried to make Bent Hill, which was the original name of the yeah, area, into Bentley, um, oh. because it sounds grander. I think that's what they've tried to do. So yes, I have, it should be much Bent Lace, perhaps. <laughs> bent Lace. <laughs> Robin. Uh, I, I just think that, that I, 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 with this lecture, I, I quickly read this and thought it said Ben Hill, and then, then I, uh, uh, and I, I think that maybe we should get them because Ben Hill was a farm up there and quite an mm -hmm. historical area of it, and yeah, and the area of land was Ben Hill Farm. So I yeah. think it should recognise where it is because we like names to recognise historical areas. So I would suggest that we write to a Martin to call it Ben Hill. Um, um, after the area of land, because then in 100 years' time, people will know what it was there for. And, and that's what we've done in lots of other places. Oh, so, well, Bent Hill Farm and cottages are still there, Robin. So, yeah, yeah, but, it, but we, they might not be there in 100 years' time. And um, But but I, I just think that is, I mean, it, it is a name, isn't it? It will grow on you, but it isn't a car, is it? Um, quite a class car. Not going to like you to own one, and they'll probably have to bring an electric model out soon, won't they? John? Well, should we write and say, look, you know, we're, we're keen on names in this town council. We've got two possible others, which would be Bent Hill Grange or the Lace Makers Hall, and we'd mm. ask them to consider it. It's got to be in their, it's got to be in their gift to decide whether they want to or not. But if mm. we send them both, they can yeah. make a choice or stick with the one they've already gone for. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Members happy? Yeah. yeah. Great. Uh, I'm not precious. <clears throat> Item 14, matters to report. We got anything quickly to report? Other than the car at the Bletchley Road roundabout has gone. Hopefully another one doesn't return. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't have any chairman's items. So date for the next meeting is the 24th of May, 7pm. And um, we've managed to get there before 10 o'clock. Fabulous. Oh, sorry, Mark. Yeah, before we go, um, Paul is obviously not standing as a councillor again. Could I personally, as a past chairman of planning, thank him for all the help he gave me, um, not only as, as chairman of, of mm. Buckingham Town Council planning, but as the work he did as chairman of the North Bucks uh, mm. Parishes Planning Consortium. Very, very much appreciated. And I, I have to say, Paul, I've learned so much from you over the years. So thank you very much for that. Thank yeah. you. Totally uh, great. We, we, we'll miss you, Paul. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you all very much. It's been a pleasure working with you. No, you have. You've been <laughs> I, I, fantastic I, I, to learn I, I, from. I'll remind you of that one day. <laughs> <laughs> Take care, mate. Okay, well, hope um, to see those of you that are standing for the North Ward. Hope to see you uh, back again. Um, but if well, you're not. not north, they're east and west now, aren't they? No, no, no. No, we're, no, no, no. No, we're north and south still. Yeah, the four, the four of us are affected, and myself, Martin, Ruth, and Howard. So, um, yeah. I just looked at the piece of paper I've got. Oh, no, that's for the other election. That's for the other election. That's the other election. The shark. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, can I just, just say no, quickly no, that... what I'm not on. <laughs> can I just say quickly that if uh, Mark doesn't get re elected, as he's mentioned about Paul, um, I've also learned a lot from you, Mark, and you've been the most wonderful vice chair. Honestly, when I've had my periods of illness, that you've just taken the helm. And I personally really appreciate that. So thank you for um, everything. And But you, I'm sure you'll be back. I'm pretty I sure you'll be back. I think the good people of Buckingham will welcome him back. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody, for your time tonight. Catherine, Carolyn, Nina, Paul, thank you very 